Today we're gonna upgrade this tank here into this tank. So how long have you been uh, running this tank, Daniel? Um, this tank has been running for six months now. Okay, what kind of uh, maintenance have you done to it? Uh, I do a small weekly water change, or uh, maybe not so small, it uh, depends a little bit. Um, sometimes I just change 10%, sometimes I change up to 30%. Okay. And then every day I add um, a little bit of oil for reef for, from uh, Tropic Marine. I mm -hmm. add, um, I think I, I use 2 milliliters every day. And the corals seem to love it. Sounds good. So how do we do this uh, in the best of ways? Uh, I have 30 liters of new water. Uh, okay. Actually, this aquarium is also 30 liters. And um, the new aquarium that we're going to uh, put here instead of this is 60 liters. So okay. we're going to keep all this water and we're going to use 30 liters of new water to fill up this new aquarium. And we just move everything out and, and put it in the new tank, basically. Yeah, exactly. First, we have to put everything into some kind of container and mm -hmm. uh, we have to put the new tank because it's going to be in the same place. And then we fill up the new tank. Sounds good. And this will also give us a perfect opportunity to have a little bit closer look on some of the inhabitants and some of the corals in here. So let's get to it. Yes. So uh, we start with measuring the salinity, right? Yes, exactly. First thing we're going to do is to measure the salinity. And for that I have this Red Sea refractometer. Here's the box. Because we want the new water that we're going to add to have exactly the same salinity as this old water. Okay. So to measure this, I just take a drop and put it on this little glass here. I close this little glass lid and I can look through it towards the light. And I can see that the salinity is exactly 1.025. Okay. That's perfect. So now we know that the new water is um, going to have 1.025 salinity as well. Okay. Yes. Now we're going to move out the first of the corals here and uh, what do we start with? Uh, I think we're going to start with maybe this little stone here. There's some uh, palutoa. A couple of, I think it's like seven or eight palutoas growing on this. So let's move it to the bucket. Then we have this. It's a small sarcophyton. I think they are called the toadstool. Here it is. And then we have this little rock with a few swanthus and a little bit of algae. Then let's take this bigger rock. It has a little bit of GSP, green star polyp, and some um, discosoma as well. There are a couple of shrimps and the snails and the hermit crabs in this aquarium. So Can we take them last or? Yeah, I think so. I left a little bit of water in the bottom so they have somewhere to stay while we take out everything else. It's a Kenya tree, right? Yes, it's a Kenya tree. This one I recently glued to this rock. Oops. This is pretty interesting. The green star polyp here, it has uh, grown on the back wall here. Yeah, it's how, do we, really, how do we get it off? I think we're gonna use a razor, razor blade to try to like cut it off from... Maybe we first cut it off from uh, the stone, so it's not attached to the stone anymore. And then mm -hmm. we just scrape it off with a razor blade. And I don't know, maybe we should try to glue these parts to the back wall of the new aquarium. That could look cool, to, to make it continue to grow on the glass. Indeed, like a living background. Yeah, exactly. Down here we have a little uh, Rodactis. 
I bought this from a friend, but uh, it uh, what is it? but it's called it uh, got off the stone. It didn't want to stay on the stone that it was sitting on, so it was like it started to pull itself to down towards the bottom, and after a couple of days, it just uh, fell off the stone. And it went in under this other stone. This uh, discosoma or something, right? Yeah. yeah, actually, it's a reductus. Reductus, okay. Yeah, it's a green reductus. Here we have a little snail. Let's move him to the bucket. And let's try to take this big uh, sarcophyton. Uh, huge. <laughs> yeah, I know it has grown to this. What is it called? This black. Do you know what it's called? Uh, no, not really. Yeah, it's attached to it now. I think we just have to pull a little bit because I'm not going to use this um, frag rack in the new aquarium. So I had, have to get it off from it. There, there we, go. we go. Looks almost like a glove. <laughs> it's pretty big. Yeah. And then we have one more of this sarcophyton. It's a small one back here. Let's see if I can get it. This one also attached to the frag rack, so I have to pull it off a little bit. Got it. Okay, let's try to get the GSP off then. I think we have to start with the razor blade. The razor blade. Let's go and get it. Okay, here we go. Here I have the razor blade. So let's try to cut it. It cuts pretty easily. Now it's not attached to the stone anymore. So now we can just take the big rock out then. Yes. It's pretty overgrown with <laughs> GSP. <laughs> Indeed. You're gonna use the razor blade to try to peel it off or just pull it off? What do you think? Uh, let's try to just pull it off. I don't know how hard it's sitting. Oh, it Seems pulls off really easily. Nice. We don't need a razor blade for this. <laughs> Those actually make really nice pieces when they're flat like that. Yeah. Perfect for gluing on the back wall in a new aquarium. Uh, Daniel also installed the filter from the aquarium here to try to preserve the bacteria and to get some circulation into the bucket here. Uh, and it's time to move out all the animals here. Uh, what do you have in here? And there are uh, three bigger shrimps back there in the corner. Um, I believe they are Lysmata Vudemanni. And there are five small uh, shrimps. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little bit white and orange. They're called sexy shrimp. They are pretty cool. Yeah, they are really cool. And uh, then there is a couple of hermit crabs. Uh, they are Clibanarius tricolor, is the scientific name. Okay. And then there is a couple of snails. There's a very small hermit crab there. Yes. Okay, let's take them out. Time to install the light, and what light is this? This is um, Maxspect, uh, 65 watts. It's a really nice lamp. I bought this tank used from a friend of mine, and uh, he used to keep some um, SPS in this tank, so he bought a really nice light for it. Uh, Seems pretty serious, and if I can remember right, you can use an app and uh, 
set different type of lightings and stuff. Yeah, exactly. But I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this light on. I might move this lamp to my other tank because I think I'm just going to have a soft corals in this tank. So a lamp like this is like way too good for them because they don't really need it. <laughs> I, could, I could probably use these old lights that was on a small tank and just add them to this one and move this uh, nice lamp to my, my other tank where I keep a little bit of uh, SPS and LPS. Yeah, we can have a look at those corals later maybe. Yeah, we can do that too. But let's, let's start with this here. For the first couple of days we're gonna keep this light on. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna see if I switch later. So we're also gonna use a bit of sand in this tank if I understood you right? Yes, we're gonna use this sand. I never had a reef tank with sand before. I'm pretty new to this reef keeping. I've only been having... Actually this small aquarium that was standing here was my first aquarium and uh, that has been running for six months. So this is gonna be my first aquarium with the sand and uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how that goes. Okay, let's put it in. I think the snails might like it. Yes, I think a lot of the animals will like this sand. I'm definitely gonna buy some of these digging snails because I've been avoiding them until now. <laughs> now you need them. Yes. We are just gonna put a thin layer of sand. Let's see how much this will be. Time to put back the first rock. I think we're gonna put it back here, pretty close to the background. There's a lot more space in this tank. <laughs> yeah, there is. There was a shrimp on that rock. And a snail. Yes. <laughs> he fell down. And this pump I'm probably gonna remove later. I just wanna add it now for beneficial bacteria stuff like that but there is plenty of beneficial bacteria inside these rocks as well look how it's completely covered here in green star polyp it's a little bit hard to see right now because yeah. i've adjusted my camera but uh, now we can see it i think Okay, so now we are going to glue these uh, sheets of uh, green star polyp that we pulled off the back wall in the other aquarium to the back wall in this aquarium. And I'm going to use this microbe lift coral scaper gel. It's a coral, coral glue. I never tried this before, but um, I think it's going to work. Okay, so we are going to put this glue here on the back side. And then basically we just Stick it on the back wall, I suppose. Yes. That's the plan. I don't know, something like that maybe? Mm -hmm. Then just hold it for a couple of seconds. Yes. With this glue you can even glue underwater. It's already stuck there now. Nice. Everything is now in the tank here and we also put in all the animals after a little bit of acclimatization for them. So now we're going to install the streamer here and then we're going to look back and check everything out. Look at all the corals and all the animals. In a couple of days when all the polyps are actually showing on the corals here. It's now two days later and uh, all the corals look really good here. Uh, how do you like this new tank Daniel? I like it a lot, especially the light. Light is really great. I love the colors on the corals in this light. They really glow uh, compared to the last light. Yes. 
Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the corals, maybe? Yeah, this sure. This is a pretty nice one here, the green one. <coughs> what yeah, is this? That's a palutoa, those round little things on the rock. There are eight of them. And on their left side, they, there is a, a sarcophyton with pretty long polyps. And to the left side of that one, it's a big sarcophyton with shorter polyps. It's a really nice one. Yeah, it's really nice. And now it has a little bit more room because it was... It didn't have much room in the other tank. True. The GSP is starting to look great. <clears throat> At least this one on the rocks. Uh, almost all the polyps are out again like they were before. The ones on the back wall, they need a little bit more time. But they are also starting to show some polyps. Yeah, especially the one up to the left there. Yeah. yeah. I say it looks really nice and there's a lot more space now. And there's one shrimp coming out here, Daniel. What kind of shrimp is this? Uh, I believe that's uh, Lysmata verdemanni. And uh, I, had, I used to have three of them. And uh, now when we emptied the old tank, we could see that all three of them were still there. And I believe it's uh, two females, females and one male, because two of them were having eggs. Nice. And there's also five of the sexy shrimp somewhere. I think there's one little one sitting there. Yeah. I bought five of them and when we emptied the old tank now, we could see that all five of them were still around. And uh, uh, all of them seem, seem to have uh, survived this move to a new aquarium as well. There's one on the uh, cycle feet on here. Yeah. You can see that one a little bit better. They look really, really nice. Yes. Before we end here today, we're going to take a quick look at Daniel's a big aquarium here and there's a lot of different corals in here also some fish and we got some other interesting animals here uh, what kind of fish is this daniel uh, those fish are uh, bangai cardinal fish cardinal yeah cardinal fish and they're called pterapogon cauderni i have a pair of them one male and a female i used to have a group i, I bought five of them just to just to get a pair so as soon as this pair formed, I sold the other three fishes to a friend. Really and good looking fish this, really really good. Yeah, they also spawned once and the male was uh, mouth brooding the eggs, but uh, he didn't keep them for many days. I think that's because this was the first time for him. He needs to practice that a bit more. Okay. Uh, uh, let's look at some of the corals. Uh, this one here, what is this one? That's called a cane, candy cane, green candy cane. This is a really beautiful one. And this is another cycle feet on right? Yes. And we have a couple of interesting one here. Uh, this spongy thing here, what kind of coral is this? That is a rhodactis. Looks really good. And the one to the left here? Uh, Parsilopora. The one to the left of that? It's a clavularia. And this interesting tree-like thing here. That is a uh, gorgonia. There's a couple of... Suantus. Yeah. And this one, this is a really beautiful one. Yeah, that's an ephulia. And uh, what kind of coral is this? That's a cinellaria. That was my first coral that I bought. Okay. And here's... Uh, also some Euphilia, some Euphilia glabrescens. And the one above it is a really, really good looking one. Yeah, that's also Euphilia glabrescens, but that's a holy grail. There's a couple of small ones back there as well. And here you have some SPS corals, right? Yeah, the green one is um, Ceratopora and the other one is uh, Stylopora milka. And quickly now, while we can see this crab here, this is a really interesting one. What uh, kind of crab is this? Uh, that's a Mitraculus crab, emerald crab. And uh, this is a really good cleaner, right? Yes, they eat algae and all kinds of stuff. We can also take a quick look at the hermit crab here. It's also a quite fun little creature. Yeah, it's a Clibanarius tricolor. It's the same species as I have in the smaller tank. 
this is all we had for today and uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more and I have a couple of upcoming videos with uh, some interesting stuff happening at my place and I'm also going to show you more of my own reef tank very very soon. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.